Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like it's o'clock, and I'm Pearl of Wisdom. You're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, coming to you live from the uh, apartments in Seattle. You've seen it. If you see my uh, my Skype stuff I do, you'll see my like high-rise thing that I got going. We're, get, we're coming from there. Yeah. Um, talking about that, we just did some videos on uh, Steel Flyers dot com www.steelflyers.com about the draft if you're a flyers fan head over there and give them a look they are fantastic um we had lance and boric and steel flyers of course and we all just some of the best writers you can find and we all got together and mingled and came up with some pretty cool stuff i'd go check it out if i were you anyways i've had some letters got some letters had some letters from uh Solio Ming from China and uh, Muric Blumovic from uh, Barno, Slovakia. I hope I said that right. And uh, Tina Robert from Montreal, who is asking, they're asking, what's going on with Taylor Hall? What's going on with Taylor Hall? And I'm asking, what's going on with Taylor Hall? So Elliot Friedman has come out just recently. And uh, by the way, if you take time right now to subscribe and hit the bell for this fine frolic that we bring you every day. Anyways, Taylor Hall uh, has said that he'd be willing to take a one-year contract to uh, to play for a contender next year. And uh, that got me all perked up. And since I had these letters, I'm like, well, we got to get into this. What the heck? Taylor Hall is willing to take a one-year contract. The question, of course, will be how much does he want on that one-year contract to go to a contender? I'm thinking that if he's willing to take a one-year contract, he's realizing that uh, the long-term contract that he might want is not going to get, he's not going to get this year. Uh, unless he goes to a lesser team. And, and Taylor Hall has been playing for a lot of lesser teams. <laughs> the bad years of Edmonton Oilers, which has been the last 10 years, and they've been a bit better. But uh, then, he, of course, he, the, the infamous trade to New Jersey, and then he played for that New Jersey team where he put him on. One year, he put them on his back and made the playoffs, won the MVP award, and well-deserved. And then gets traded again, to Arizona because he wouldn't talk to them about a contract until after the season was done and they got the feeling that they were going to lose him and they were probably right. So he goes to Arizona. Arizona can't afford him. It was a silly move by Arizona. I don't know what they were doing. Anywho, uh, actually, I do know what they were doing. They was like they're desperate to make the playoffs and they need that playoff money because that team is going down the hole really quick. So now... I got me to thinking, what teams would be able to take Taylor Hall on for one year? Now, if he's looking for what has been rumored, and you can go look at that anywhere, uh, or you can just look at it logically, you, a, a left winger who's almost a point-of-game winger uh, probably could make on a one-year $9 million, I suppose, if you could find somebody to take him. But if you want to go to a contender, there's only one team that I can see that we're willing to do that sort of thing. And uh, that would be the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, I'll, I'll show you, I'll go back and show you. Uh, I, lo I looked at all the team's availability and the Colorado Avalanche have a lot of cap room. And uh, if they wanted to, they could give him the 9 million or 8 million for one year and pretty much be okay. Um, this is, of course, cap friendly, cap friendly. It's the best there. I said it. Um, we look at uh, Colorado's lineup here, and you have uh, Miko Rantanen, uh, McKinnon, Landeskog, of course. What an amazing line. Then you add Hall to Nazim Kadri, possibly re sign Andre Burakovsky, uh, and Vic Val Valerie Nachushkin. And then you're going to have Comfort, Jonas Donskoy, Calvert. Uh, Matt Nieto apparently is going out to free agency. Lots of options here. They can even add more if they want to. 
They've, they, if they wanted to, they could have a sick second line. A second line that would be a number one line on a heck of a lot of teams. I'll show you the cap space they have here. They have lots of cap space, as I said. 22 million in current cap space with several players to sign. If they want to keep Valerie Nichushkin, that's probably going to cost them three, three million, somewhere around there, two and a half to three. Wilson won't cost much. Uh, Tyson Yost won't cost all that much. Um, I haven't heard what about anything with Andre Burakovsky, but I think he'd be about in the four million dollar range. So as you can see, they would have enough to sign Nikita Zadorov maybe two and a half million, somewhere around there. Um, they would have plenty. And if they only took Hall for one year, they wouldn't even have to worry about protecting him in the expansion draft. It's a possibility. It certainly is a possibility. Um, the thing is, would Joe Sackick do something like that? Joe Sackick is one of the most brilliant. Joe Sackick is the general manager of the Colorado Avalanche, if you don't know. Uh, he's one of the most brilliant minds in hockey uh, when he played and in as a general manager. He's made some incredible moves to get to where they are right now, building up this defense with Samuel Girard in the Duchesne trade, uh, drafting Kale McCarr, bringing in Ryan Graves for virtually nothing. This is a guy that makes moves that make sense all the time. This somewhat does make sense, but I have a feeling that Joe Sackick knows there's going to be a lot of players falling off the vine here. I was going to do a video on it, but one of those players is Ryan Strom, apparently, in uh, for the New York Rangers, who they are considering not even giving a qualifying offer. Now, I think that's a play to try to get somebody to give them, them something decent for them at the draft so they can get a draft pick, and it might work. And Colorado could be one of those guys. He's a center right winger. He can play right wing. He can, you could probably sign him in the $4 million range. And then you can find another player in the $5 million range. And you've got two players to fill out the depth. And that's something I could see Sackick doing instead of giving Hall all that kind of money. Now, that being said, Hall, he wants to be play for a contender. What, what if Colorado says, no, 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 we, we don't want to go that direction um, for whatever reasons. Uh, I, when I bring up Taylor Hall to a lot of people, what they'll talk about is the fact that he's had injuries in the past little while. Well, on a one-year contract, you may not have to worry about that so much. At least, hopefully, he can make it through the year. Second is, everywhere Taylor Hall, it seems to be there's talk about an attitude. Um, I think that attitude stems from the fact that this guy is obsessed with winning. Um, there, I, he played for the Edmonton Oilers, and I'm an Oilers fan. When they traded him, they were saying things like, we wanted a different voice in the room. So take that what you wish. Sounds like Taylor Hall may be kind of a blowhard. He kind of yells at people a lot. He hates to lose, and he puts it on everybody, and that kind of thing like that. I could be totally wrong, but it's possible. And if those are the rumors, and those rumors are fairly accurate, Joe Sackick may say, I don't know if I want that in my room either. Right? So let's go back to the cap friendly here and look at some other things. Now, let's say Taylor Hall says, you know what, I don't need the, I got lots of money. I make tons of money. Um, and I'm more, so, more or less setting myself for next year. Maybe he wants to alleviate these rumors. Maybe he realizes he has some maturity that he, that he needs to do and or needs to show. And he'd like to just go to a contender, period. Well, we go down to this bottom here. This is basically what I did. I went up and I went, okay, New York Rangers. New York Rangers could give him a shot as well. Uh, I may look that in the next little while. Uh, and not at $9 million a year, though. They have tons, uh, not, not at $9 million, though. I think they have tons of people to sign. And I just don't think that they want to throw $9 million at a left winger when they're pretty set up along the wings, not to mention... The New York Rangers have a lot of young players who are trying to get into their lineup and want to give them ice time. And I just don't think it would be a great philosophy to bring in a guy like Hall, especially if he's the kind of guy that yells and puts down his other players and stuff like that. Not really an environment for young players. So I kind of said, nah, I don't think so. As you can see, Colorado's way down here in Capron. 
Then we move up to this one here. Talk about interesting. The Boston Bruins. We go down the Boston Bruins here. Now, they're not going to give them nine, I don't think. Let's look at their cap space, shall we? Uh, 14 million in cap space. Who do they have to sign? DeBrusque, who has been rumored all over the place to be traded. Okay, he's a left winger. Boston is in win now mode. Bergeron, 35. Krejci, who's going to be a UFA next year, 34. Marchand, 32. Their window is not shut, but it's kind of on, it's definitely on the closing end here with their big players. Of course, we know Chara is ancient, probably will still be able to play next year. Um, and then they also have the Tory Krug at 29. So they haven't been able to bang out a contract for Tory Krug. And if they were to sign Tory Krug, they definitely would be out of any hall talk. Um, however, there's a lot of talk that Krug wants to go to Detroit. There's a lot of talk that maybe they like Matt Grizzlick to be able to take that Krug role. And with the rest of the defensemen they have, Jeremy Lauzon could use some ice time here now. He looked really good last year. Connor Clifton looked really good uh, as well. Has looked well, like a 5'6 for sure. They still got John Moore, they still got Brandon Carlo, which who is a beast, and of course, McAvoy. And I'm missing one because uh, I'm surprised they have him in uh, not up in the lineup here. Oh, no, I'm not. That's right. That is, I'm thinking of the Rangers. So they have a lot of defensemen, that, and they got a lot of defensemen coming up as well. J Jacob Zaboral is, is, is primed and ready. They could start giving him... Euro Vekanainen has looked very good. He's gone through some injury problems. He's a guy that can replace some of their top guys. So they could move on from Krug. And I'll, almost everybody will say, and I will say, one of the biggest problems that Boston had last year was their scoring depth. And they tried to solve it with guys like Andre Kasha. They traded uh, um, Heinen for Kasha. I didn't like that trade. And it turned out it wasn't a very good trade. They also tried to, they also got, I think it was Heinen and Nick Ritchie, if I remember correctly. Nick Ritchie kept on doing the same thing that Nick Ritchie was doing in Anaheim, and that was making bonehead plays. Um, he just makes bonehead plays. So, the, but the I, he was supposed to be a guy who had some offense in him and could play tough. He did not do well in the, in the playoffs. Neither did Andre Kasha. They have been looking at Bjork, Anders Bjork up there hasn't looked very good. So besides their top line, which we know is sick and crazy, right? Bergeron, Pasternak, Marchand. David Krejci's getting up there, but he's still a good 50, 60 point guy when he's healthy, which sometimes is very difficult for him to do. And besides that, it's just like a patchwork second line. So if Taylor Hall can go six, maybe seven, and they don't sign Krug, now you've got a second line of Hall and Krejci, and you can work with another player on the right side. Maybe you do keep try to sign Jake DeBrusque, or you trade him for a right winger to fill out that lineup. I think this is almost, this is a very likely place that, boss, that, that he could definitely go. If he's really concerned about playing for a contender next year, you're not going to get much more of a contender than the the Boston Bruins for next year for several reasons. Their window is closing, so they're in win now mode. Taylor Hall can go there and know that this is win now. So that's going to give them all the motivation to continue adding throughout the season if need be, uh, if they want to try to find a replacement for Krug halfway through the year or during the cap, during the trade deadline or something like that. This team could be set for a, a deep playoff run. So that was that's another player team that I was looking at. Um, now, when we move up from there, I, I mentioned the New York Rangers. Let's slowly move up to the Dallas Stars. The Dallas Stars, of course, almost uh, made it to the finals last year. One of the big reasons that they maybe weren't able to compete with Tampa is they didn't have all the guns that um, Tampa did in a lot of ways. Um, let's look at their cap room, shall we? Their cap room is 
14 million with a few people to sign. Uh, facts, uh, uh, Rupe hints, um, probably would take up about half of that. Uh, you don't really have to bring Corey Perry. Maybe Corey Perry will go for a million. And then you've got Guriana. That probably is going to fill out your cap room. Um, Miro Heiskin in the sign later and so on and so forth like that. Now, they could look at trying to move on from somebody like Cogliano or um, uh, there's been talk of trading Klingberg and stuff like that to make that cap room. But honestly, I just don't see it working out for Dallas. Although I know a lot of people that would be their first pick, but they just don't have the room. I just don't see it. So now the big one. As we slowly move up here, San Jose Sharks might give him a call, the Chicago Blackhawks. But, and then, of course, there was a lot of talk about, and the letter from, uh, from Tina Robert said wanted the Montreal Canadiens to do that. Now, that's a possibility um, that the Montreal Canadiens would give him that one-year contract. I just don't think that when the agent and Hall put their heads together, they're going to be too interested in going into a team where their top two centers are like 21 years old. That being of Kasperi Kokaniemi and Nick Suzuki. Um, not that they're not going to be great centers. They probably are going to be. But for next year, I can't see that working out. Now, it's possible that this is the team that throws them the $9 million for a long-term contract. And he looks at their lineup and goes, you know what, they're building pretty good here. This is a team that does show that they don't want to rebuild and they want to keep on moving on building. Uh, they want to win every year. And maybe he could do something like that. But that this would really be the only team that could do something like that, which is why I think he's doing the one-year contract and trying it again next year for the longer contract. Um, so, finally, I'll go one more team here that might have a possibility of doing it. And I know it's going to blow you away, and I know that people, this came up in Facebook groups for uh, the Edmonton Oilers, and they were like, no, he's a problem in the room, and he's all that stuff like that. And I mean, I get it. I totally get that. However, um, first of all, let's look at their cap space. It's not very good. On paper, they've only got $8 million in cap space. We're basing this on the fact that maybe he goes six and seven and wants to be in a contender. Is Edmonton a contender? That's the next thing. Um, I would say with Hall, they certainly become a very, uh, there's certainly a very good chance that they're a contender. No doubt about that. Hall did not leave, did not leave Edmonton because he wanted to leave Edmonton. Um, he loves it. He's from the Alberta area. He loves Alberta. Calgary was another option here. I just don't think him and his agent would come to the conclusion at this point that Calgary is a contender. They are a potential long-term place to go, though. But uh, for a one-year one contract and you're going to throw some money out away, that's also why I think it's Montreal, because he's going to be taking money off the board here. He's taking a risk. What if he gets injured next year, right? So... He's taking a big risk here, and if he's going to take a big risk, he's only going to do it to play with some great players and with a team that has a chance. Now, I personally think that with Taylor Hall, uh, let's go to the depth chart. Uh, first of all, we, we got to talk about how they're going to get cap space here. They could move away from Nugent Hopkins. I don't think that's going to be something that they would do. Um, Oscar Clefbaum is going to be injured. So they may have to replace them, but they may just roll with what they have on defense if they're going to do it this way. That would remove $4 million off the cap once the season starts. Um, so you're getting to that point where if they don't add too much more, they don't have to sign out in the stadium. They can walk away from that. They might have room to add one more of Shane or Ennis. Um, the, it, it's going to be tough. For them to do it. There's no doubt about it. I'm not saying that it, it oh, Alex Chason. They can trade him away. They could do some things here to move a few contracts to make enough room for them. Um, assuming they do, let's take a look at what this depth chart would look like.
you'd have Taylor Hall, Connor McDavid, and um, Scott Josh. This is Scott Josh Archibald. I guess that could, even if it, it is Josh Archibald, that to me is kind of weird. Uh, but uh, then you have Nugent Hopkins, Dreisaitl, Yamamoto. Whoever you want to put on the right side, we hopefully can find something. You can put Cassian back up there. Why not? He played well up there. Bring Archibald down here. Uh, Chase on would be gone. So we'd be going with some of our younger players. And there is some younger players like Benson, Nygaard, uh, Ryan McLeod. These guys should be ready to get up into that uh, up into the lineup next year. And they can throw everything at that top line. But the big thing is that top line would be insane. Absolutely insane. Then you have a power play of Hall, McDavid, and Dreisaitl. Oh my gosh, man. So those are my possibilities that Taylor Hall could go. I would say that, um, and tell me if you've got a team out there that maybe I'm not thinking of that he could go to as well. I looked at a couple others like the Washington Capitol, Philadelphia Flyers. They just don't have the cap room even at $6 million. And, and if I'm him and his agent, I'm probably not going below $6 million for one year. Uh, definitely not. But those are the players I looked, the teams I looked at. I think the most likely one out of the ones that I said would have to be the Boston Bruins. So, uh, the Boston Bruins would be most driven to acquire him. Um, like I said, they could they can move on from Jake DeBrusque, who they've been lukewarm about, and uh, now they got a contract coming up that I don't think they're I think they're afraid of what DeBrusque may demand. Um, but there are teams that would definitely take a chance on DeBrusque, no no doubt about it. So then you would take DeBrusque and you would and you could put Taylor Hall in with Krejci, and again, like I said, you could try Andre Andre Kasha there. Coolman actually has some offense that. Is kind of untapped and they could try or maybe you could even wait through go with that for now and wait through it the year and add more see that's the big thing as the season goes on cap space changes there's more opportunity to add some wingers to help them out personally that's my choice I would say that if Taylor Hall is going to go somewhere on a one year more than likely it's going to be the Boston Bruins. There's one other team I'm just quickly going to mention as a possibility because they're in the West and uh, it would be the Vancouver Canucks. I don't even have to bring them up. The Vancouver Canucks is a slight possibility because they're in the West and I think a lot of people might bring them up as a possibility as well. I just think at this stage the agent and him would look at it and say they're maybe a little too ripe. That's my full 42 boys and girls. Thank you for your subscriptions and your follows and your comments on the bottom. Most important, I love the comments on the bottom when we're getting chatting and let's connect together, shall we? Have a great day and lots of love to you.